Hello friends, welcome to Susan and John MathTube. In this video, we are going to learn about the ANOVA test or analysis of variance. And the aim of the test is right in front of you to test the equality of more than two means. When we learn testing of hypothesis, what we do is first we learn how to deal with single mean and then we learn about two mean and finally more than two mean and that will be our ANOVA test. Similarly, we learn single proportion, then two proportion and more than two proportion and more than two proportion test is called chi-square test. But in your syllabus, this chi-square test is used um, to what do you call find the association between uh, two parameters so that's different okay anyway let's start so let it be any ANOVA question step number one what is step number one yeah you have to set up the hypothesis so step number one is fixed and that will be mu1 equal to mu2 equal to mu3 equal to dot 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 in general we write mu k and h1 will be equal to not all the means are equal so remember when you want to test whether uh, more than two means suppose i want to com uh, compare three products let's say x y and z let's say health drinks so the initial step will be all are giving the same effect and h1 means not all are same anyway let's try one problem it's a question from 2075 and the print is not clear so i'll read the question for you so they have given the breaking strength of three different brands of cables yeah that's it more than two so they have measured the breaking strength of cables and they have given us some numbers based on it and it's clearly mentioned carry ANOVA test to check whether the average average means mean so equal uh, are the averages equal or not okay so the first thing to do is that is step number one so tell me what is step number one yeah step number one means you write the null hypothesis and alternative so the null hypothesis is mu1 equal to mu2 equal to mu3 because we are testing with three different brands of cables and on one side you can write k equal to 3 you can put it in a box or you can put a tick because you need this at the last now write the alternative hypothesis and that will be h1 not all the means are equal this is the only thing you can do with the help of ANOVA. Now step number two, as always, um, is level of significance. Level of significance means, yeah, the amount of risk we take. And it was given in the question to use 5%. So we write alpha equal to 5%. Now one very important thing. Uh, when we learn single mean, single proportion, etc., etc., uh, and when you have a two-tailed test, you will be always thinking about alpha or alpha by two. In two-tailed, it is alpha by two, and in single tail, you take alpha. But in ANOVA and chi-square, you don't have to think about it. ANOVA is already um, what do you call a positive distribution. Uh, the in ANOVA what we do is we take the Fisher's distribution which is the ratio of sample variance and variance will be always positive so the graph is completely on the positive side so there will be only one tail so you don't have to think about whether we have to take alpha or alpha by 2 anyway uh, here we don't learn the logic we learn only the process okay now step number three and that's the most important step that is calculation so let's write step number three and this will be a little bit long so calculation so i kept the question over here 
now what we do is we write x1 x1 minus x1 bar the whole square and then x2 x2 minus x2 bar the whole square x3 and x3 minus x3 bar the whole square and in exam they might ask uh, let's say four brands or four different products of maybe up to four or maybe five if it is four you have to write x4 and x4 minus x4 bar the whole square okay now i'll teach you how to fill this we can fill this only column by column that also you have to fill x1 first and x1 is yeah 40 and then 30 and then 50 then 60 30 and blank now what we do is we write the number of items i'll call n1 so look at this the visible items are 1 2 3 4 5 don't count this so n1 equal to 5 now let's add all these values and divide by 5 that means i'm finding the arithmetic mean so add all these values i hope you are doing along with me yeah so the answer is 42 you can check that answer okay now once you have filled the first column you're ready for the second column because the second column involves x1 bar you can take a look at this the second column involves x1 bar so unless and until you finish this column you cannot start with the second column so it is x1 minus x1 bar that means 40 minus 42 40 minus 42 is 2 and 2 squared is 4 actually it is negative but we don't care about that negative because it's square now 30 minus 42 it is minus 12 but you can think about 12 and square 12 so that is 144 and 50 minus 42 that is 8 so 64 and 60 minus 42 that is 18 so we get 324 and again 144 and again blank so you can add them up and you can write sigma x1 minus x1 bar the whole square equal to 680 okay now what you do is you go for uh, b this this one so we have what you call 60 40 55 65 blank blank so how many are visible 1 2 3 4 so n2 is equal to 4 and x2 bar you add all these quantities and divide by 4 and you get 55 and now we are ready for the next one so what we do 60 minus 55 the whole square and yeah, that is 25 225 okay you keep on doing this you can check your answers this should be 350 and here n3 equal to 6 and x3 bar is equal to 60 and over here you'll get 850 so you can confirm those values now to find one more thing that we will do here that is the combined mean so for combined mean i'm going to use x bar and that is n1 x1 bar plus n2 x2 bar I hope you remember the formula for combined mean the whole divided by uh, capital N capital N actually means I forgot to write that n1 plus n2 plus n3 that is 6 plus 4 10 10 plus 5 15 and you can do the calculation by yourself I got 52.67 okay anyway after this what you do is you write everything neatly n1 equal to n2 is equal to n3 is equal to and capital n equal to 15 k is equal to 3 i hope you remember writing k in the beginning here now you can write x1 bar is equal to 42 and x2 bar is equal to 55 
x3 bar is equal to 60. Now look at this. To find the variance, we need the sum of squares. And we find two different types of sum of squares. One is called treatment and other is called error. And you don't learn the logic behind it. But just write sum of squares of treatment. I'll teach you how to calculate this. And you have the combined mean here. X bar is equal to 52.67. Now I'll tell you what to do. So what you do is you select this 5. And then look at the combined mean and this. So you take the difference between them. And square. Plus again 4. And 55 minus plus, okay, and that is SST is equal to, I got 913.33. You can confirm it. You can check it yourself. Yeah. And next is SSE. And for that, it's very easy. Look at this. We found something like this. Do you remember? We are already the sum of squares. Yeah, add them up, you get SSC. There is sum of squares of errors. That is 1880. Now, the last thing to do ANOVA table. I will give you the easiest version of ANOVA table. We don't write much, we will just write source. And here degree of freedom. And next is sum of squares. And next we write mean sum of squares. And finally we can find the calculated value. Okay, and we divide this into two. Here we write treatment. And here we write error. In the standard table, in exam also you can write like this. K minus 1 equal to, we already have the value of K. And here you write n minus k equal to, this will be a better way of filling up in exam. And here you write sum of squares of treatment. And that is equal to 913.33. Now sum of square of error. And that is 1880. Now actually what we are finding is the variance. So variance is nothing but mean sum of squares. So we divide this by this. And we get 456.67 and here it is 156.67. Now just divide this and you get F calculator and that is 2.91. So keep it in a box, this is the most important value. Okay, now as usual, step number 4. In step number 4, what we do is, we find the tabulated value. And here the test is F, so we find F tabulated. And the format for F is numerator, denominator. And that will be the ratio. F is, I told you, F is made up of ratio of variances. So, numerator is treatment and denominator is error. That means 2 and 12. The degree of freedom is right here. So you take the F table. It's not that clear. So you'll be able to see numerator. And here it's written denominator. So 2 and 12. So you just find this value. It's not clear, but you can use your table 3.8853. That is 3.8853. Now you have to draw the graph. Please be very careful because in the other test, it will be two-tailed, especially in normal distribution, T distribution, etc. two-tailed. But F and chi-square are single-tailed. And the usual logic. We have to write reject on the tail and accept on the other part. And here we write 3.8853, the critical value. And now step number 5. And that's as usual. I'll go back, find this value, F calculated. Look at this, 
from the last step we got f calculated equal to from the table ANOVA table f calculated equal to 2.91 now 2.91 where is the location of 2.91 here that means we accept h0 that's it so I'll be back with another video as soon as possible so that's it that's ANOVA but if you uh, and if you want to be confident in the exam do a lot of questions for the time being i'll give you one more question which you can try now itself you can pause the video and check the question so i'll be back soon with another video so till then bye